I wanted to show off one of my dogs, other dogs. I have four. You've seen the girls. So this is Nico. Nico. Good boy. Okay, now I'm going to go in my bedroom and do a book review. Hey, y'all. I am going to do a book review on um, The Death and Life of Charlie St. Cloud. I just finished it. I started yesterday, and it was amazing. I absolutely love this book. I'm not sure if it's going to have spoilers in it, so I'm going to do a spoiler alert now. If you haven't read it, then I probably wouldn't watch this video. Um, the Death and Life of Charlie St. Cloud by Ben Sherwood. I absolutely love this book. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, from, it was like a ghost book, ghost story book. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the previews of the movie, and from what I've seen of the previews, it makes it sound like it's about um, his brother that dies and how he still sees them and that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That's part of the story, but that's not the main line of the story. Um, just from the title of it, The Death and Life, it's not the life and death, it's the death and life, because in the beginning, Charlie and his brother both die, and Charlie's brought back. Um, and for the first 13 years after he's brought back, after Charlie's brought back, he um, can see his brother. And he plays catch with them every night in the meadow um, in the cemetery. Um, Charlie took a job at the cemetery working there. He takes care of it. He's the care keeper, caretaker. Um, so he lives in the little cottage on the cemetery. And every night he goes and meets his brother. They made a promise um, when they were both when they first died, they made a promise to never leave each other. Um, and Charlie got brought back and his brother didn't. So he, since then, Charlie's been able to see ghosts. And his brother decided not to cross over, so that's how they're able to be with each other. Well then, in the midst of the story, Charlie meets a girl, Tess, who has plans to, uh, she's a, a sailor, she sa uh, sails, and she has plans to sail around the world. And there's only like eight people that have done it. Um, and she's got to do it by herself. She's got to do it solo. So it's like a few days before she sets sail for that. Um, she takes a little a little journey on her own. And it's going to storm. And somebody told her, don't go this way because of the storm. Well, she likes to defy the odds of things and that. And do what she's not supposed to. And she actually rode into the storm. And her boat capsized. Well, the kind of boat it was, it's supposed to ride itself again. And... It ended up writing itself, but by then it was almost too late. And But you don't know that yet in the story. All you know is that her boat capsized. And then the next thing you know, Charlie's in the cemetery um, taking care of some business, and she's visiting her father's grave. And they meet in the graveyard. And they only go out. He invites her to dinner that night. She comes, out to di she comes over to dinner and eats with them and that. And then she goes home. Uh, he kisses her that night, too. And then she goes home, and she can't stop thinking about him, even though she's supposed to leave in a few days. And he can't stop thinking about her. And they meet up again. And she ends up, uh, they ended up doing more stuff. And he's, like, so happy, and she's so happy. But then, um, I think it's, like, the next day or something like that. Oh, no, I, I take that back. Sorry trying to follow the timeline in this without giving away a whole lot um there's a notice there's like an alert put out before they do more stuff before they meet up again so after their first dinner together that's it it was after their first dinner together uh there's an alert put out in the town that her boat hasn't come back it's been gone for 48 hours and she's missing and charlie's like how can that be i was just with her last night but he doesn't want to tell anybody that and um she goes, so while he's out on the boat with the other people looking for her, she goes back to the cemetery to visit her father's grave, and she sees Sam, his little brother, and doesn't realize it's Sam until they're about to leave. You know, she's about to leave in that, and she's like, and what's your name? And he's like, Sam, Sam St. Cloud. And she knew that Charlie's brother died, and that his name was Sam, and she's like, what the, she's either going crazy because she's seeing ghosts or something something that's just weird so she thought maybe a kid was playing a joke on her and that's when it kind of hit me like there's more to the story than it's saying and that twist comes and 
So she's actually, you think she's dead because she's seen ghosts. And Charlie comes and he figures it out too and thinks she's dead. And they end up spending one last night together while she's supposedly dead. And um, then she just fades away. She just fades away and he can't see her anymore the following day. Um, so he's freaking out. He's like, oh my gosh, she's crossed over and just, you know, I started falling in love with her and, you know, I thought my life was going to, you know, start again with somebody else in it and, you know, she's gone. Well, she's freaking out too because nobody sees her. Her mom can't see her. Nobody can see her. And so she thinks she's dead too. And, um, so it's, it's about, you know, just coming to terms with all of that stuff. And I'm freaking out because I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that he just met her and she dies and oh my god that's just horrible well then towards the end of the book he actually um they go looking for her one more time and they actually find her body and she's got hypothermia and she's almost dead and they rush her to the hospital and she ends up being in a coma for a long time and um i forgot exactly how long it is it isn't like years or anything um and when she finally comes to, she can't remember anything at first. And then slowly she starts to, you know, remember. She knows offhand, though, there's something with Charlie. There's something with that boy, something I like. And then her memories start to slowly come back to her. Um, so when she was able to see Sam, it was because she was in between worlds. You know, just like um, when, before Charlie was brought back he was in between worlds, you know, because there's like one other plane after life on earth. <clears throat> after you die, there's one other plane, and then you can go to heaven or, you know, whatever you call it. I call it heaven. Um, so it was just, it's so hard to put it into words, just this book. It's just the writing of it um, was amazing. Uh, just, it just, I love this book. I just love, love this book. And I actually had this book up on Goodreads to swap it when I was like halfway through and then when I came to that twist about her about Tess I was like oh my gosh I was like I can't I took it off uh, Goodreads because I'm not swapping it I'm keeping it I mean just the feel of these pages and just the uh, if you haven't read this book you have got to read this book you just have to read this book it's just it gave me chills I mean I literally got goosebumps at one part of the book it was that good um yeah let me try to sum it up because i kind of went through the story but i'm gonna try to sum it up really quick charlie and sam die charlie gets brought back from then on he can see ghosts he takes a job at the cemetery where he can see sam every day he, uh, him and sam play catch every night years later 13 years later a girl enters his life enters charlie's life and he starts falling in love with her after the first day but after the first day, he realizes that she actually may be dead and it may be a spirit, a ghost that he is actually falling in love with. So he's on a quest to try to figure out because every sign that he sees of ghosts, they have kind of a shimmer to them or they just look different, like he knows they're ghosts. But with her, he doesn't see anything. Like he can't tell that she's a ghost. So he's like, well, maybe something else is going on. So he sets out to try to discover that. But in the meantime, she disappears. It's like she just vanishes. And he thinks it's because maybe she is a ghost and she went to the other, she went to the other side. Um, and he finally finds her body um, when he went back out on a boat again. Didn't want to give up looking for her again. Found her body. And she actually had hypothermia. Took her to the hospital. Um, well, the paramedics and all that took her to the hospital. And they were able to bring her back. She was in a coma, though, for a little while. And she ended up surviving. So while she was in the coma is when um, she had passed over or started to. And that's when he's seen her. Well, that's when he's seen her ghost in that. So now that she's awake, um, she knows there's something special about him. And she doesn't remember, though, really anything, spending time with him. So he's got to try to build all that up again. So, um and like I said, with his brother, that was just part of the story. It wasn't like the main story. So it was amazing. Amazing. All right, enough of that. I probably just butchered that whole review, and I'm sorry. All right. Death and Life of Charlie St. Cloud, Ben Sherwood. Read it. Thanks. Bye.